GoPro Max 360 camera is changing the way pilots shoot video of their aviation adventures. The high quality and flexibility of this camera is amazing. It captures a 360 degree view of everything that surrounds it and puts it into a single file. The magic of movement is done in post using a video editor that accesses a special plugin. This plugin allows the user to manipulate the footage to any view or angle he or she desires. In this video, I will go through a simplified step-by-step -step process on how to create a video for YouTube with footage from a GoPro Max 360 camera using Adobe Premiere Elements. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this one demonstrating the ins and outs of aviation video production. Now for mounting cameras on an airplane. Some pilots mount their GoPro Max facing forward, thinking that you really don't have a choice. If you want to capture video, it's gotta be straight ahead. This is not so with the GoPro Max camera. Here I've mounted a GoPro Max on the rear aircraft tie down using a mount from My Pilot Pro. Notice that I've turned the camera sideways parallel to the wind. This way of positioning accomplishes two things. One, it helps prevent bug smashes on your lens. And two, it keeps the force of the wind from pushing the camera back on its mouth. Since the camera captures a 360 degree view, it doesn't matter that the camera is not facing forward. The software in the camera automatically merges the forward view with your rear view into one video file. After your flight, remove the SD card to download the files to your computer. There are many adapters available to gain access to the files on your SD card. I created a folder on my computer named My GoPro Max and copy the camera files into it. Here are the files. The only files we're interested in are the ones that have a 360 file type. While in this folder, I created a subfolder named Processed. This folder will hold a converted video clip from the original 360 clip. If you don't have Adobe Premiere Elements on your computer, it's available on Amazon. Again, the link to it is in the comments area of this video. Before you open Adobe Premiere Elements to edit your video, you'll need a couple of things. Download and install the GoPro Max exporter. There is a link to the application in the comments area of this video. This export application takes the video files you have saved in the My GoPro Max folder and copies and converts them to standard MP4 files for use in Premiere Elements. After opening the exporter, set the process folder you created earlier as the destination folder and the file prefix you want. We chose Processed as our file prefix. The settings shown are the ones we used. Click on the Import Files button to load your 360 files into the queue and click the Start button. This is a lengthy process to do the conversion, so be patient. After the export is complete, you'll see the newly converted files in the processed folder. Before I get into video editing, there is one more step, adding a plugin called GoPro FX Reframe. Download and install the Reframe plugin. There's a link to the application in the comments area of this video. Premiere Elements accesses the Reframe plugin, giving you the ability to adjust the views and angles possible in the video files in the process folder. Now it's time to work on our video using Adobe Premiere Elements using the expert mode. Before we start, we need to talk about the frame size of the final video we will create. Adobe Premiere Elements gets its frame size, otherwise known as sequence settings, 
from the first video clip that is loaded to the timeline. From that point on, all other video clips that are added to the timeline are forced to use the same settings as the first clip. Here I have added two video clips to the project assets area. One is a regular GoPro Hero clip and the other is our new GoPro Max 360 clip. We'll pull the GoPro Max 360 clip onto the timeline first. When we go into the upper menu under Edit, Project Settings, then General, we see the settings for the final video creation, which will be the frame size of 3840 by 2160. Any other video clip added to the timeline after this will be forced to use those frame size settings. This will cause problems when we try to create our final video using the GoPro FX Reframe plugin. The solution is to load the GoPro Hero video clip first to the timeline, then all following video clips, including the GoPro Max 360 clip, will be forced to use the conventional frame size of 1920 by 1080. Now it's time for some GoPro Max 360 fun using the GoPro FX Reframe plugin. The first order of business is to delete the GoPro Hero clip from the timeline since we used it to establish the final frame settings of 1920 by 1080 for the 360 video clip. Note that the settings remain at 1920 by 1080 even after the GoPro Hero clip is removed. Next, we need to apply the GoPro FX Reframe plugin to the GoPro Max 360 clip by dragging it onto the clip from the Effects tab. Now it looks wonky, but there's more. Right click on the video clip and select Clip, then Scale to Frame Size. In the Applied Effects area, set the zoom to 70% to make the final product as sharp as possible. Now, while in the Applied Effects area, open the Advanced Controls arrow to expose the X and Y offset controls. Click on the keyframe icon in the upper right hand corner of the Applied Effects area. Start at the beginning of the video clip and place a keyframe marker on the Pan, Tilt, Rotate, and Y offset controls. You'll see them appear in the timeline chart on the right side of the Applied Effects area. Change the settings of each control to get the video to look like you want it to. First the pan control. Then the tilt control. Then the rotate control. And finally the Y offset control. Now play the video. We'll stop there and add more keyframe markers by clicking on the center diamond in the source operation area. Now we'll change the settings on each according to what we want to see. Play the video from the beginning. Pretty cool, huh? Let's do one more. Find another spot to adjust. Add some more control keyframes as before. Play the video from the beginning. That's about it. Pretty simple, huh? One more thing. To make smooth transitions between keyframes, use your mouse to activate all their keyframes. Then right click on one keyframe and select Continuous Bezier. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. There are more videos like this one coming. Thank you.